I will now prepare my autoradiography. This is exposing polaroids with uh, ionizing radiation instead of visible light. This is um, a polaroid pack as you can see. It is already opened because I took some photos with it, but I hope it still works and that only the, the first sheet will get exposed by light and the rest will be covered. I'm not sure. I never tried this on an open pack, but let's hope it works. What I'm going to place on this Polaroid to expose is a tiny piece of uranium bearing ore. It's a very tiny chunk, but you can see the green stuff there. That's uranium and UV light. And I'll place it face down on here. And I will also use a sample of Trinitite that has been formed and the Trinity nuclear bomb explosion. It shouldn't be much radioactive anymore, but we'll see. I will also be using some radium watch hands, which I will place on the film. And I will be using an americium source. I will be using the barium source, a synthetic radionuclide, as well as cesium. Cesium-137 that is. And strontium-90. We'll place a bit of a lantern mantle on here. That contains thorium, by the way. So now we have a tiny bit of uranium which emits alpha, beta and gamma rays, sort of equally, well not equally, but a lot of each. Then there's radium, which is um, an alpha emitter, but also emits beta and gamma rays. There's uh, tritium, which I'm not sure if it irradiates anymore. We will see that later. There's some erythium here, which is um, a almost pure alpha emitter. Same as thorium, it's a quite pure alpha emitter as well, but there's other stuff in there as well. Then we have the strontium-90, which is a beta emitter, the cesium-137, which is a beta and gamma emitter, and the barium-133, which is an x-ray emitter. So I will leave this in place for about 24 hours without touching or moving the things on it, the sources on it, and let's see what happened. Okay, so the autoradiography is done. I will now remove the radioactive sources and stick the film back into the Polaroid camera and then just take the pictures with the lens covered and see what happens. Okay, so this is the first photo. And yes, we can indeed see something. Okay, so this is the film developing. The first one is developed already, so is the second one. The third one is still not ready. Fourth, fifth, sixth, number seven, and number eight. And this is the one that has been on top. There's something visible there, you can see. You can see the, the shape of the source disks. Take a close look, look at the source disk. Can you see it? Uh, it has been exposed by visible light, so it's rather useless. Okay, I placed the radioactive objects on the blank film, much like they were laying on top of it. And what is quite interesting to see is that um, you can see the shape of the watch hands here. They have illuminated the film quite well, but it's a rather blurry image. The americium source, which can be seen here, this one, illuminated the film really well, which is weird because most of it was alpha radiation, but obviously the beta and gamma radiation uh, did quite well as well. And um, you can see that a tiny bit of uranium ore, that was just a, a very thin layer of uranocercite on the top, so that didn't do much, it's just a very, very faint, faint spot here. Um, what you can see from the thorium 
lantern mantle. You can see um, it's not evenly distributed in the uh, lantern mantle. You can see there's actually quite a lot of starium on, on some part of the side there, but not so much in the center, which is kind of interesting. And the other sources are... Um, what's this? This is uh, strontium-90. Yeah, strontium-90. As you can see here, they have a really bright spot, a really well-illuminated spot. And strontium-90 only gives off beta radiation, so um, it's not as penetrating as gamma radiation, and yet they have a very bright and easy-to-see spot. Interesting as well as this one is the cesium source test that gives off beta and gamma radiation and that left a very clear spot that has no no blurry edges or anything. It's very clear. And this one is barium-133 which actually gives off X radiation and you can see it left a really really large corona like sort of halo around it. It left a really large blur. It looks like a little sun or something. So those results are kind of interesting, I think. Especially if we look at the other ones. This is the second sheet. There's not so much different there. Third, fourth. And now it's getting quite quite interesting because you can see the X-ray penetrated um, the films really well. But so did the beta source, the strontium 90, which is kind of weird. You can see the radium and the americium source are getting quite faint but the beta and x-ray still went through all the way so it's kind of kind of cool that's the fifth one and look at the last one this is the eighth one in the in the film and you can see the x-ray produced a lot of scattering it was yeah it's really really a blurry spot while the beta particles from strontium 90 just went all the way through and illuminated the film from top to bottom see the difference again oh put them next to each other so you can see if you look at this the radium watch hands are barely visible the um, alpha emitter, the americium 241 just left a very faint spot on the last one the thorium lantern mantle is completely gone it's not visible anymore on the last one the cesium which is a beta and gamma source just left a very faint spot as well the x-ray is a big halo-like shape and strontium 90, the beta emitter is a really really strong spot it's almost as strong as on the on the first picture well it actually is about the same strength I guess but, uh, but it was just further away from the source that's why it sort of got blurry much like a shadow does oh yeah I almost forgot to mention this but um, so you can see the strontium 90 source here is 0 0.1 microcurie while the cesium source, cesium-137 source, is 0.25 microcurie and the barium-133 source is 1 microcurie so the barium source was actually the strongest which sort of explains the bright spot but the strontium source was, in theory, from, from the activity, it was the weakest and it left the brightest spot, so that's weird so yeah, those, those results really amazed me. I, I didn't think that beta particles were able to penetrate that well. So um, I will use this information for further autoradiographies. When I will also try to um, place a dead mouse on the Polaroid film and see if I can probably x-ray it, sort of. Either using the x-ray source or the beta source, as we saw this works best. And I would also try to illuminate an actual x-ray film with those sources. And in theory, the x-ray should work best if you think logical, but then again, if I look at the beta and the Polaroid, maybe the beta works best. Who knows? I really don't. We will see this later.